On my first video on this channel was the presentation of my switchless mode for my Mega Drive CD32X, where I can change the region of my Mega Drive and 32 x as long as the Mega CD matching BIOS is just holding the reset button. It was based on MM Monkey work with a PIX 16F630, an LS00, a multi bias, some crude wires, and way too much hot glue. It was a bit overcomplicated, but it was working fine but only when hooked in RGB. If you try to link the console in composite or mod it to output S video, here's what happened. The reason is how the colors are encoded, or precisely how the color subcarrier frequency is generated. PAL and NTSC don't use the same frequency. PAL signal uses a 4.43362 MHz frequency, while the NTSC needs a 3.579545 MHz. On the Sega Genesis, those frequencies are derived from the main clock. In North America and Japan, the main frequency is 53.693175 MHz, and the divider is applied resulting to a 3.579545 MHz signal. In Europe, the main frequency is 53.203425 MHz, but with a divider of 12, resulting to a 4.4336175 MHz frequency. But when you mod the console to switch between region and video signal, you also change the divider. So if you have a Genesis and switch to PAL, its main frequency is divided by 12, resulting to a 4.47443125 MHz signal. If you have a Mega Drive and switch to NTSC, its main frequency is divided by 15, resulting to a 3.546895 MHz signal. Neither of them will be recognized as a proper color subcarrier frequency by the TV, resulting by a black and white image. This is a known issue, and of course, someone came up with a circuit which forced the color subcarrier frequency and thus restoring the colors. Based on this circuit, I made my home spin off, which can output both of the color subcarrier frequencies. You had to desolder the video encoder, put the PCB in place of it, and put the video encoder on the top. They should intercept the signal from switching region, and with a small remote you can either for file or NTSC console let the signal at ease, restore the broken frequency by patching it, or for the color subcarrier signal. I even made the version for the Genesis 2 which requires a HC04 as a driver for the signal. It was somehow working, but the quality of the video was not as good as I expected. But I could have put PAL 60Hz and also the infamous NTSC 50Hz which can make the TV freak out. But all of my work became irrelevant when Micro came with an even better solution. Rather than patching the signal, he came up with a dual frequency oscillator, a programmable oscillator which can output both PAL and NTSC main clock and can be switched with the logic input. It's at the same size as the original oscillator, so the deep version can just replace it. And since it's totally programmable, the solution is also working for other consoles, such as the SNES, the Saturn, or the PlayStation. The different versions of the DFO, as long as the programmer needed, are available on his OSH Park profile. Links are in the video description. So this is my version of the programmer, it's exactly the same, with a small difference. Uh, I made it a bit larger with a fixing hole so I can put it in an enclosure of at least on stands. And this is the DFO in the deep version uh, and as you can see uh, mine is slightly bigger than the original main oscillator but that's not the only uh, difference in my version. Let's take a closer look. So this is the main programmable oscillator CDCE913 from uh, Texas Instruments paired with uh, its uh, 27 megahertz crystal. But as you can see there's some outputs for a LED for each region, outputs for video and language as long as the reset input. If you remember the original switchless mode uh, this is very familiar and if you check on the back of the DFO I put the PIC 16F630 with the D4S code as long as the LS00 for handling the RGB LED. Since I have only one LS00 gate, I have to invert the order of the BIOSes in the multi BIOS. But like that, I have both modes in a single tiny PCB. Let's check how it is inside the console. I will put the 32X aside for now. 
For the purpose of this video, I've already removed all the screws. First update is the RGB LED connection with now a proper GST connector so it can be easily detached. They are still a bit too much hot glue, but at least it's not like the mess uh, on the previous installation. Uh, I still use a 5mm LED because I already drilled the hole, but you can put 3mm. Here's a closer look to the PCB where you can see you can put proper resistor for each color so you can adjust the brightness at your test. Let's continue by removing the shielding which I couldn't let uh, inside on the previous mode uh, because all the wires plug uh, everywhere. Here is the DFO which I already talked about. And one of the first updates is the reset button. Before that uh, I used a weird PCB where I could hijack properly the reset signal but I found another point where to solder the output, so right there which is slightly better for cable uh, management. So some Mega Rev and Genesis have a different way to handle the reset, so active high or active low. Active high means the resistor, which now is on the DFO, uh, so you can solder only if you need it. Uh, the rest is pretty much the same connection with uh, region or uh, language and the uh, connection to the Mega CD multi-bias control. As you can see, uh, yes, it's a bit cleaner, but I don't have any connection to the 32X anymore. Well, that's another update. There's an old switchless mod for the 32X, which need a PIC 12F629 and the code from Ikari01. It takes the sync signal from the cache slot and output on the SEGA 315-5788, where you can usually put your region switch. Uh, with this mod, I could uh, remove the connector from the cache slot, and hopefully it was just uh, hot glued, okay, it was easy to remove. For the 32X card, it was a bit more complicated. I melt some ABS on the previous hole, then sand it with steel wool triple zero to make it invisible. There's still some gap, but I think it's acceptable for a restoration. So the 32X is not getting uh, his color subcarrier uh, frequency from the main clock of the console, but have a proper oscillation circuit. So I've tried again to make a dual oscillator circuit. Here you get the PIC 12F629 with the switches code and based on my previous work you get both PAL and NTSC subcarrier circuits. The MAX4948 is handling both of the circuits with proper LUMA and proper chroma for both PAL and NTSC. Unfortunately, I must have done something wrong because the PAL circuit is not working properly. I will still debug it, but in the meantime, I think I will publish everything on GitHub. All the link will be in the description. But again, this is not a big deal since uh, I'm using uh, RGB. Hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching.